Hello there, and welcome back to another video. This video is going to cover one of my favourite arcs in the Darth Vader comics. Without further delay, let's get into the video. We begin in Palpatine's office in the Imperial Palace, formerly the Jedi Temple, where Palpatine is questioning Vader on why he has killed two Inquisitors. The Dark Lord informs his master that these two Inquisitors had betrayed them, so he removed the infection. However, in the madness of Vader chasing them throughout Coruscant, he had left a trail of destruction, including accidentally killing a senator important to Palpatine's plans. Due to the chaos that had unfolded, the Emperor was concerned people may think his grasp on his power was slipping. Therefore, he decided to move the Inquisitorius off of Coruscant, presumably to Nur, where we see them in Fallen Order and the Kenobi series. Deciding he has chastised Vader enough, he orders his apprentice to rise, as he leads him out to the hangar where he has a reward waiting for him. Sitting in front of Vader is his wife's ship. This is a tool Palpatine is using to fuel his apprentice's anger. A maintenance droid working on the ship begins to give them an update on the progress of its restoration before Vader crushes it. The Emperor's plan is working. With the threat of the Jedi gone for the time being, Palpatine has a new mission for his apprentice. Bail Organa refuses to bend to the Empire's will, so the Emperor orders Vader to travel to Alderaan and teach him the error of his ways. No. The Emperor is taken aback. No? In return for the remaining Jedi that he has destroyed, Vader wants something. A world. The Emperor has Coruscant, so he only sees fit that he too should have a planet to shape as he wants. Palpatine offers Vader Naboo, due to the connections he held to the planet. These connections would only remind him of what could have been. Tatooine was also a choice, a place where Vader could use his rage to make up for all the suffering he experienced there. These options provided to him by Palpatine were all part of his plan to keep Vader firmly planted within the dark side. These locations would have brought up a lot of emotions and feelings for his apprentice, none of them good. However, Vader doesn't want any of these planets, he wants Mustafar. Vader is on board his wife's royal starship, en route to Mustafar where he is having an imagination sequence. He is seeing the body of young Anakin Skywalker, however the face has morphed into the mask of Darth Vader. The Imperial Architect assigned to Vader interrupts his vision as she notifies him of their impending arrival. Acknowledging her role in this project, she does have one question, why Mustafar? This sends Vader back to the conversation he had with Palpatine shortly before he departed, where his master also asked him, why Mustafar? Back to the present, Vader heads to the cockpit as an announcement is played over the ship's sound system, leaving Colonel Bren to her thoughts with her assistant. She's puzzled over how to approach building something for Lord Vader, initially believing he would prefer the minimalist approach. However, seeing his beautiful J-Type 327 Nubian Royal Starship has thrown her off. They also speak of his reputation, saying he's very intimidating, before an alert is sent out that the ship's temperatures are rising. They have entered Mustafar's atmosphere and don't have any shields. The Colonel attempts to advise Vader to return to a safe distance from the planet until their shields are off operational. However, he reveals that it was him who deactivated the shields. He warns there may be pain as he guides the ship to the planet's surface as the Mustafar natives watch on, and they land in one piece. Although with a severely burnt exterior, Colonel Bren attempts to gauge what the Dark Lord's purpose is here on this planet, but he ignores her. Vader enters the cave where he bled his kyber crystal red, as his mind goes back to his conversation with Palpatine, when he was asked why he wanted Mustafar. You sent me to bleed my kyber crystal at the dark side locust present on the planet. When I touched that power, I saw deeper into the Force than ever before. I believe things are possible at the Locust that are impossible elsewhere. Palpatine admires his apprentice's ability at not being able to let things go, sensing Vader's desire to bring Padme back using the dark side. Having given his apprentice a ship and a world, he has one final gift. Vader's memory is interrupted as he finally answers Colonel Bren, telling her he is on Mustafar to study, to try and understand a great mystery. Not knowing how long this will take, the Colonel retreats to the ship with her assistant and they begin to work on Vader's project, with not much information to go off. Having constructed an initial design for Vader, the Colonel finds him within the cave as she shows him, expecting him to be pleased. You are wrong. She returns to the ship to begin redesigning it before an almighty- comes shrieking from her direction. This captures the attention of Vader where he goes to investigate and finds the Colonel with a wound to her abdomen, dead. He goes inside the ship, finds her assistant, however he has a mask on with thin, glowing red eyes. This mask was Palpatine's final gift to his apprentice. It was the mask of Lord Momin, a powerful artifact of the dark side that had been stored within the Jedi Archives vault that was once guarded by Jocasta Nu and her droid Kator. Palpatine told Vader the story of Lord Momin, who had deferred from the Sith's usual norm of destruction, instead deciding to create. Palpatine seemed to believe they both had this quality in common. Vader had never heard of this Lord Momin, as his master informed him that due to his methods being not so common for a Sith, 
his story had been suppressed. Back to the present, Vader slashes through the Colonel's assistant where his body hits the floor and the mask goes back to its lifeless form, leaving the Dark Lord staring at a hologram of another design for his castle, one that the possessed body of the assistant had created. Examining the mask, Vader takes it with him back into the cave where the dark side is incredibly strong. Holding the mask in the air, the Dark Lord asks what it is. The mask comes alive. I am Lord Moman, and everything I did was guided by one simple principle. A burst of energy emanates from the mask as we are taken to Moman's childhood. He would create art with the purpose of making those who viewed it hurt and afraid. The first instance of this was mutilating his family's Rada cat for a sculpture which his mother walked in on, leaving her horrified. If an individual felt nothing when seeing his creations, then he had created nothing. He continued using animal skulls amongst other materials, leaving onlookers terrified to the point of him being arrested with his tools confiscated. Whilst in prison, his name spread throughout the galaxy until the Sith Lady Shah freed him and took Moman on as her apprentice. Moman received a pair of lightsabers which he used to create this mask. He didn't like the role of being an apprentice, feeling he was second to none. Lady Shah disagreed, so he proved it to her by killing her in a duel. Moman didn't take on an apprentice of his own, there was too much to learn, no time to teach. He embarked on his travels to many sites, aspiring to learn about the dark side. Being guided by the force, it told him to choose a city and thus, Moman began his project. Using resources inherited from Lady Shah and acolytes eager to assist him, he designed a great engine with the power to wipe out an entire city. To make his shrine to the dark side, Moman planned to pour the force into his engine, and at the moment it dawned on the citizens of the city their doom was imminent he would stop time, forever trapping the inhabitants with expressions of shock and horror on their face. The engine was set and he began to create his masterpiece. However, the Jedi arrived, killing the acolytes before destroying him too. His mask was left, which contained his spirit. As Moman wraps up the story of his past, he attempts to possess Vader. However, he resists, throwing the mask against the wall of the cave. The Dark Lord leaves the cave, coming across a group of Mustafar natives, where he kills two of them before putting the mask of Lord Moman on a third, giving him a body again. They both return to the cave, where Moman explains the castle he had created whilst possessing Colonel Bren's assistant's body is the key to unlocking the door to the dark side. Moman continues on, telling Vader that Padme waits for him beyond this door, assuring him that this fortress will be able to tune the energies of the Force Locust that resides here. Vader Force chokes him. I have been lied to about the dark side's ability to prevent death before. Do not offer me things you cannot provide. Moman convinces Vader that he only wants the chance to create, to which the Dark Lord releases him, however assures him that he will suffer should he betray him. Lord Moman began construction and with materials supplied by the Empire it was soon finished. He isn't able to access the Force as he is just the mask in his current state, so it is up to Vader to open the door to the dark side. The Imperial workers and native Mustafarians feel the effects as the ground begins to shake, the lava begins to erupt, and this isn't the first time either. It is happening more and more frequently. This isn't the first time Vader has tried to open the door. In the center of a henge type setup, much like in Ahsoka, called a focusing chamber, Vader begins to force the door open as the lava is going wild outside. Moman can see on the other side. Believing he has achieved the goal, he admires his masterpiece, but Vader can sense something isn't right. All of a sudden, a large burst of energy sends Vader flying, rejecting him. Meanwhile, the native Mustafarian clans know they need to do something to protect their planet. The land screams at what Vader is doing to it every time he attempts to open the door. They know something must be done to save their planet. Moman. The ancient Sith is analysing his creation and what he can improve on. Too many focusing spires are in play, which are splitting the castle's energy, making it impossible to control. He begins to make modifications for a sixth design, but Vader ignites his lightsaber behind him. Lord Vader emerges from the cave with Moman's mask, where a group of stormtroopers approach him, wondering how they could be of service. The Dark Lord rips one of their helmets off and puts Moman's mask on the stormtrooper's head, giving him a body to possess once more. He picks up right where he left off, beginning to design the sixth set of plans. All of a sudden, a warning comes from a lookout, as lava fleas come storming out of the lava towards the Imperial forces. Moman learns this is almost an everyday occurrence since the first attempt at opening the door caused lightning storms. He is fascinated at the planet's native species being against his creations. Soon, the sixth design is created and Lord Vader attempts to open the door once again. This attempt was not successful as Moman's next appearance is possessing the body of an Imperial officer, suggesting Vader has once again killed his former body and given him a new one. Moman is confident the seventh design will achieve their goals as he makes further alterations. Lava comes to life once again, but no luck, as Moman is next seen possessing a lava fleet, reassuring Vader his eighth design will be the one. A burst of energy and still, 
nothing. Moman is once again possessing a different body, indicating yet another failure, as he acknowledges Vader may be losing a bit of faith in him at this point. Moman's ninth design though, in his own words, is really something special. Vader has had enough, warning him there will not be a tenth design. Vader and Moman enter the cave, and they can sense there is something different about this one. The design of the focusing chamber has been altered, as Vader begins to attempt to open the door once again. Stormtroopers watch on from the outside, but this time there are no violent strikes of lightning or lava erupting. There is only a beautiful surge of red travelling from the castle into the sky. Moman admires his creation, as well as Vader's ability with the Force. The Dark Lord can feel the door calling to him, wanting to be opened. Moman attempts to warn him that this was only meant to be a test, to see if it could be opened advising him to rest and choose the moment it should be opened. Vader force pushes him away, refusing to be denied the opportunity at his very fingertips, forcing the moment now. With whatever lay on the other side at the Dark Lord's fingertips, the commander of the castle's garrison interrupts him, warning of a serious threat they are facing outside, warning moment to not do a thing until he returns. Vader takes a look off a balcony as he sees an army of native Mustafarians and lava fleas heading for his castle with one goal in mind, to destroy it. Meanwhile, Moman continues to admire his new design of the focusing chamber, but that's not all he does. Vader is flung off the balcony as a huge burst of energy erupts from the castle once again. Moman has opened the door, and on the other side awaits his former body. He retrieves his mask once again as his masterpiece is complete. Himself. 